Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, we're going to break down Omni Hall and Moto 15. So Omni Hall is a new UI convention that brings the benefits of hauling all across the app with the aim of giving us more consistency in operation among the direct modeling tools and between the direct tools and the equivalent mesh operation or MOPS as we like to call them. Omni Hall also gives us some new benefits with regards to precision and experimentation and configurability. We're going to cover all of these things in this video along with mini properties or mini props and hopefully showcase how the combination of Omni Hall with mini props offers up a faster, more efficient and more predictable workflow. Now, if you're a Moto user, you know that we've always had haulings. Now I've activated Edge Bevel and you'll notice there's some icons over here on the left hand side, which I'll get to in a second. Now in previous versions of Moto, I've always been able to haul the inset just by left click and drag, right? So we've always had that and it's really nice to haul because we get real time feedback and we can experiment with different input values until we find something we like. But that's the only parameter I could haul. I couldn't haul round level or mitering offset or depth. I do have two tool handles. Doesn't say what they do off the bat. So if you use Moto long enough, you tend to memorize them or you can just experiment. And like this one is, is inset and this one does mitering offset. So we get some benefits kind of like hauling where we can experiment with the different uh, values here before we find something we like. But I have to hunt and peck and search for these tool handles. And again, I don't know what they do just at a glance. We're over here at a glance, I can see that I have different mouse buttons and directions assigned to each one of these tool channels. So I've got left mouse, uh, left, right for value, just like that. And I've got right mouse, left, right for round level. So I can experiment with my round level just by left, right with my right mouse button. And I've got mitering offset to up, down with left. So there's my mitering offset. And I've got depth set to middle mouse in and out. And it's so much easier to work in this sort of up, down, left, right, various mouse buttons and experiment until you get what you want than having to come over here and type something in like that or use these little mini sliders like that, which I've always thought sucked. They're really small and the feedback's not great. And it's the only option we had those, either typing something in and hoping it looked good or typing something else in to get what we wanted. It's much better just to haul, right? Just go left, right, or up and down until you get what you want. Omni Hall also gives me an option of precision. You see this little black box at the bottom that's changing as I haul with my middle mouse button, changing the depth percentage. At any point, I can just stop hauling, hit enter, and change that to whatever I want it to. Same thing with round level. It'll automatically pick up which mouse button you're hauling with, in this case, the right mouse button. So if I want to be precise about my input, I simply hit enter or click on the box and type in the number I want, all without having to go over here and click and type and hit return in the tool properties. So we can continue to work right here in our interface. And like I said, it works with anything. So whatever I'm hauling, in this case, left mouse button for inset, as soon as I stop, I can just type in a precise value and it'll lock it in. So press Q to drop the edge bevel tool, select some polygons, press B for the polygon bevel tool. And let's talk a little bit about consistency, right? We want consistency between tools. So if you remember, to get the segments or the round level in the edge bevel tool, we clicked and dragged left and right with the right mouse button. So you'll see that's been mapped to segments of the polygon bevel tool here. So I'm clicking and dragging with my left mouse or right mouse button to get these segments right here in the polygon bevel. And we've done that across all the tools. So any tool that requires segments like edge chamfer or bridge or polygon bevel or edge bevel, they all have segments mapped to the right mouse button. So it should be consistent between tools, same with all the clone tools. So if I were to clone this, go over here to the duplicate tab and do a clone tool, the number is going to be mapped to the right mouse button. So I can drag these out and I can right mouse the number of clones there. So right mouse is always going to be attached to segment or number in terms of a clone or a sweep or a slice. And so it should have a lot of consistency between those tools. The other aspect of consistency that's been improved upon is to use the same hauling parameters for mesh operations that we have for direct tools. So I add a cube here and I select this top, uh, these top edges and add an edge bevel like that. You'll notice that I have my tool handles just like we do with the direct modeling tool. So for mitering offset and inset. And of course, these are item properties because it's a mesh operation instead of tool properties, which are down here for the direct modeling tools. But you'll see the same icons or the same button and direction hauling, the same mapping 
that we had with a direct modeling tool. The difference is with a mesh operation, we need to press the C key to activate channel hall. So we're still using the channel hall tool like we have in previous versions of Moto, but you don't have to go through and select your channels this time. We've pre-selected them for you. Now you can change this, of course. We'll get to that in configurability, but we have a preset of channels set up with channel hall for all kinds of items and mesh operations that match the direct modeling tools. So with channel hall active here, I can left mouse, left and right for inset, right mouse, of course, does the round level, left mouse up down, does that mitering offset like that, and middle mouse, left, right, of course, does the depth. So it operates in the same manner as the direct modeling tool. The biggest difference is I have to press C to get my channel hauling here, and when channel haul is active, I lose my tool handles. So if I press C to drop channel haul, you'll notice this word channel haul will go down when that tool is dropped. I get my two tool handles back, and if I press C to activate channel haul again, I lose my tool handles. So that's a little different than the direct modeling tools where the tool handles are always there. Maybe this will change in future versions of Moto, but that's something to keep in mind now. You have to press C for channel haul to use Omni Hall, and you'll see that it's on down here by seeing the channel haul words active. And when you have channel hall active, you will lose your tool handles like that. Other than that though, it should work exactly the same. So here that's working like that. If I add a new mesh and give myself a cube and just move that cube over here and do the direct modeling equivalent with uh, edge bevel. Again, the dragging is exactly the same as the mesh operation I have over here. So I could go back over here and select it, select my mesh operation, see for channel hall and start dragging the same way as my direct modeling tool. So along the lines of improving consistency among the direct modeling tools and mesh operations in Moto, as well as improving precision and a more streamlined UI, we have the concept of mini properties in Moto 15. So as you know, there's two types of properties in Moto. We've got item properties, which will appear on the right-hand side. So edge bevel is a item, right? It's a mesh operation item, and its properties show up over here on the right-hand side in item properties. Whereas if I select my direct modeling cube here and grab a couple of polygons, I can activate the polygon bevel tool and I get tool properties here on the right hand side. You can see that. Now, if I press spacebar, or you can also map this to Q if you like to keep space for uh, dropping tools and toggling these component modes, you can map it to Q. But defaulting to space, you can bring up mini properties and that can also dismiss that with space. So it brings them on, bring them off, right? Spacebar will bring those on and off. And if you have a tool active, it'll always bring up the mini properties for that tool. And if you drop the tool and go over here, if you have an item selected and no tool selected, it'll bring up the mini properties for that item, right? So it's the most used properties that we think are at least the most used properties of that item or that tool. And of course you can easily add to this and change this. And I'll show you how to do that in the configuration section but it's a really quick way of working. So I can go over here and I can select a couple polygons and press B for bevel and start doing some beveling. And let's say I don't want them grouped together. I don't have to go over here to the left-hand side to ungroup them. I just pop up my mini properties and ungroup them here, right? And I could pop it on and off. I wanna group them back together. And it works the same way with mesh operation modeling. So if I have a couple polygons selected here and I add a polygon bevel, mesh operation, and then I can activate channel hall by pressing C and just dragging using Omni Hall and getting my uh, values in there the way I want them. If I don't want those polygons grouped, I just press space. And it's actually bringing up item properties this time, not tool properties, because I'm dealing with an item, but spacebar doesn't care, many properties doesn't care. It just brings up the properties of what you expect it to bring up and I can ungroup them here, click space again to get rid of it and just go on about my modeling or maybe click it back on and group them back together. And I can also do some precision here if I want to as well and turn it off. So, so very useful in terms of getting to the most used properties of your item or your direct modeling tool. So we've really been talking about direct modeling and uh, procedural modeling with regards to Omni Hall and mini properties, but really they've been extended all throughout Moto and there's all kinds of uses for them. In this scene, oh, let me just pop up my schematic here. I've got this uh, particle cloud, right? This particle cloud item. And let me just turn on my locators. That's this um, orange uh, sphere here. Let me just isolate that. You can see the little dots that are the particles. That's a particle source. And I've got um, a particle modifier in here that scales those particles up by 300%. And I've got my radial fall off here. If I turn on the move tool and move it around, you can see that that's limiting the 
uh, effect of the particle modifier to the radius of that fall off. And, you know, I've got my replicator, of course, and my prototype mesh is just that teapot right there. And if I turn on control one, toggle my lights and my uh, camera and turn off my isolation, you know, we've got kind of the whole scene here. Let me just turn off my particle uh, cloud so it doesn't um, sort of clutter up the scene. But you can see how using many properties is, is just a really quick way to work along with OmniHall. So if I select my camera here and just press C for OmniHall, I already have these channel hall uh, channels set up or hauling set up on these channels. I don't have to go in there and select them one by one and do my hauling. They're already set up. So focal length is just sort of the most common thing you do with the camera. So that's left mouse button. Focal distance, I can middle mouse button that so I can get my focal distance in on my uh, teapots there. I've got f-stop setting for uh, middle mouse up down. I can just pop on my uh, mini properties here. For instance, if I want to turn on depth of field like that, click it off, press space, pop it off. No more going over here and finding the right tab and then clicking it on and then coming back here to work. You just work right here in the area, right? You just turn it on and off right there without having to move my uh, mouse over you know, off the focus from where I'm working. Same thing with the light. So if I uh, select the light here and press C for channel hall, I've got you know intensity on right mouse button. So intensity is always gonna be mapped to right mouse button on all the lights and all the fall offs, it's always gonna be intensity. And then I can adjust my uh, cone angle here with left, left, right, and a soft edge, uh, right, up, down. I'm not sure that's gonna show in the advanced viewport. Um, and I can just use, you know, again, spacebar to pop up uh, my mini props and change the color or something like that. Or I can grab my mesh item, my teapot, and pop up um, mini props and, and change the name of it. No more going over here to the item list and selecting or doing that weird hold click thing. Just pop it up and change it. Uh, again, the, the camera, sometimes I like to change my camera to a different color just so it stands out in the scene more. So again, pop up mini props. I could just actually hide this uh, schematic here. Pop up mini props to the space bar and add some draw options. They're right there in mini props. So I can go user and I can change my camera to like a, a green color and press space to dismiss it. And, and there we go. So it's a really fast way of working. Um, even fall offs have built in channels for Omni Hall. So press C for my fall off. And just again, the most common thing is the radius of my sphere. So put a lot of thought into mapping the right channels between all the fall offs and all the cameras and lights and uh, particle has uh, it's it's worked its way through the particle modifiers as well just to, you know, get our, you know, sort of consistent work within Moto. So right mouse is just always button, right? So if I select my particle cloud, it has its own uh, set of preset Omni Hall. So max particles, I just right mouse, you know, that's always a number, whether it's segments or clone or particle number or whatever. It's pretty much always right mouse, left, right. So you can just do that. I can, again, I can adjust my um, radius with just, you know, clicking and dragging. It's just super useful to do that. And and again, just popping stuff up if I want to disable my fall off or enable it just using the space bar. Or maybe I want to do a solid core. So solid core is mapped to middle mouse button. You should just be able to glance up here or over here and get it, get that. You know, again, it's at a glance where tool handles don't really give you at a glance um, feedback. So, I you know, it'd be nice to have tool handles maybe in fall offs, but it's nice to be able to just click and drag and haul and just kind of glance up here, glance over here to know which mouse does what. And there's some pretty good uh, presets on these. So again, I think it's just learning to sort of remap your muscle memory to work with Spacebar to pop up many properties. It'll work with uh, both items and direct modeling tools. Now there is a hierarchy. So if I have an item selected like my teapot here and I press uh, Spacebar, I'm gonna get my teapot properties. But if I have a direct modeling tool active, let me just isolate my teapot and move in like this and say I've got some polygons and select B for bevel. If I press space, it's not going to, even though my teapot's selected, it's not gonna give me teapot properties in the mini props. It's gonna give me whatever tool I have active. If I drop the tool, press Q, and I don't have a tool active, then it's gonna go back to my teapot. And you can of course pin that here. So I have that pinned. You know, it's going to keep my teapot there. If I go to my replicator, I'll have replicator mini props. Or if I go back to uh, particle cloud mini props, light mini props, radio fall off mini props. We've set up mini props on, on most of the items available in the item list. Um, but if I have a, say, the move tool active, it's going to give me mini props for the move tool because that's a tool, right? So these tools are going to take precedence over items. So drop the move tool. And one thing you will notice if I have multiple items selected, like a, the, let me just go to item mode here by pressing five. Um, if I have multiple items selected, like the spotlight, the replicator, the camera, and I press space for mini props, I'm not gonna get anything. 
Now, perhaps in the future, if I just select the camera here and press space, I, I've got it. Uh, perhaps in the future, we can have tabs on mini props. Maybe that would be useful. It kind of reminds me a little bit of how Softimage XSI used to work with some of their property panels and tabs. Um, that would be cool, but right now it just does one at a time. So if you have more than one thing selected, no mini props, right? So pop that up and turn it off. If you're wondering why mini props aren't selected, you may have more than one thing selected. For instance, I may have like a, a material selected over here and an item, and that's two items in Moto. So you gotta be a little bit careful. But remember, you can always drop all your items by hitting escape. So I can hit escape, it drops everything, and I can just grab my replicator again, pop up with my mini props, and maybe I'll change like random twist or something like that. Um, let's see, if you have a uh, item that you think there should be some sort of hauling on it and it, it doesn't show up, you can come over here to the top right corner where it says all tabs and say load default hauling. Now there's no default hauling on a replicator and maybe we should be adding that in the next version, but you can quickly set up your own hauling and, and we'll, we'll do this in another video. Right now I'm just going to do it with, uh, uh, we'll do scale all on left mouse button and I just click and drag left and uh, twist we'll do middle mouse um, on Y. So if I want to do random twist, I have middle mouse on Y and I can click that and you can kind of see them going around in there. And then I've got all my random scale map to left mouse. So I can click and drag there. And then I can always go back up here and clear the hauling. I can either do it one by one. Like actually it's better I think just to right click and say clear all hauling assignments and it goes away. And there you go. So I'll have another video on showing you how to customize and save, but both tools and items, but you know, there that is. And of course, many properties can be customized, which I'll put up a, a way shorter video. Since this is an overview, it's, it's a longer video, which I think is fine. But So that's the gist of it, right? So it brings in some consistency in how the tools operate, you know, all the, you know, uh, direct modeling tools, both consistency among them, like right mouse is gonna be segments always, um, and between the mesh operations and modeling tools. So clone, right mouse is always gonna increase the clone number, whether it's a mesh operation or a direct modeling tool and many properties just quick access to properties um, whether it's modeling direct tools like tools modeling tools properties or uh, item properties and quick access to sort of the most used parameters or toggles on those items and uh, direct modeling tools and then of course there's the precision you have with um, uh, the tools so i can you know Again, press B for bevel on this guy. And then once I get out, I can just hit enter or click on that and um, you know, type in a number exactly the way I want it. And so you know, we're gonna work on some things in uh, forthcoming versions of Moto, I think, in terms of using control and shift to control the snapping of things like hauling uh, degrees or hauling angles. You should be able to snap to like 5, 15, 45 degrees or something like that while, while hauling really easily or 1% or 10% really easily. Same thing with moving. So it's a little bit harder to determine um, fine and coarse control when you're dealing with distance. So, you know, do you want to move in a millimeter or a meter or a fraction of a millimeter or a kilometer, right? It's usually based on the grid size in Moto that gives a sort of a rough approximation of the scene size you're dealing with, but I think we can find some ways to make that better as well. So anyway, this is sort of Omni Hall overview in Moto 15. Uh, I think if you take the time to remap your muscle memory to some of uh, these new techniques, uh, it's really gonna make you work faster. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yum, yum.